when I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable. And in fact, my parents were still willing to let me go back to Harvard and finish my education if I wanted to. And so then I got this incredibly conservative approach that I wanted to have enough money in the bank to pay a year's worth of payroll, uh, even if we didn't get any, any payments coming in. One of my biggest memories of Harvard came in January 1975, when I made a call from Courier House to a company in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that had begun making the world's first personal computer. I offered to sell them software. I worried they would realize I was just a student in a dorm and hang up on me. Instead, they said, we're not quite ready. Come see us in a month, which was a good thing because we hadn't written the software yet. From that moment, I worked day and night on the extra credit project that marked the end of my college education and the beginning of a remarkable journey with Microsoft. If you're going to start a company, it takes so much energy that you know you it better overcome your your feeling of risk. I don't think that you necessarily, if you're going to start a company, you should do it at the start of your career. I think there's a lot to be said for working for a company, learning how they do things. When people are first skeptical and they think, oh, this kid doesn't know anything, then when you show them you've really got a good product and you know something, they actually tend to go overboard and they think, whoa, you know, they know a lot. Uh, let's really do an incredible amount with these people. So our youth, at least in this country, uh, was a, a huge asset for us once we reached a, a certain threshold. Those, those problems that come with starting the firm, you better think of those as, as part of the the pleasure, part of the, the, the challenge that, that is part of the, the excitement. You can't just keep doing the same old thing you were doing before. You have to take your skills and attack the new frontiers. In the business of technology, uh, you have to think about what are you missing? What is the research or customer feedback that you should be paying more attention to? And how do you keep that pace of innovation very, very high? How do you make sure you're hiring the very best people? And that kind of focus has is, is helped drive us forward through all the milestones the company has had. You've got to enjoy what you do every day. And for me, that's working with very smart people it's working on new problems. You know, every time we think, hey, we've had a little bit of success, we're pretty careful not to dwell on it too much because the bar gets raised. People's expectations of the, the products, we've always got customer feedback telling us that machines are too complicated, they're not, they're not natural enough. About 25% of the time that I'm out uh, traveling around meeting with customers, Europe, uh, Asia, and that sort of helps me think, okay, do we have the right priorities? What, what are people responding well to and what would they, they like to see us do better? The competition, uh, the, the, the breakthroughs, the research, but the computer industry, in particular software, you know, I, I think uh, is the most exciting and I think I have the, the best job in that, in that business. And you, you all have a chance to innovate. As you're thinking about your innovation, and of course you should go after any market that you think is interested in it, but a little bit if you can also think, okay, does this innovation apply to those most in need? You know, what are you going to do to make it cheap enough, simple enough, you know, figure out how to get, get it so it really, if possible, uh, can extend out uh, to the poorest. You know, I wish I had learned more about that uh, at a young age, um, and so you have an, an opportunity to do that.